the focus is on the UK business to take out more cost, give a stable operating uh, platform. Uh, we have done the investments in the last couple of years uh, in renewal of some of the assets. And also in terms of uh, the Netherlands business where we have spent in what we call as a star program on making the assets better in improving the product mix. Uh, I think from next year onwards, we would be getting the ben starting to get the benefits of those investments. So our focus is that uh, Tata Steel Europe should be cash neutral and self-sufficient and therefore not draw from Tata Steel. And that's the <coughs> focus and premise on which uh, the entire alignment of the, of the management team uh, is. And I think uh, we should be in that kind of a position in by the end of this year or maybe if the market kind of remains challenging, maybe a quarter later or so on. So I think if that, that is the uh, outcome that we are focusing on and get to, uh, then we do not see uh, any impact on the India business. And India business will essentially uh, be focusing on its own investment plan that has already been committed. And the balance amount of free cash flow that we are talking about is used for deleveraging. We've, we've taken out about 17 and a half thousand crores <coughs> in the last six months of the last financial years. We have said we will take out another billion dollars this year, and that journey will continue. No, but Kaushik, I think no one's questioning the India business. That's that's doing extremely well. People are extremely bullish on it, and people cheered when you said that you will restructure your uh, European operations with this joint venture. And, and I'm not joking. Believe me, people say that you know the European steel market is like a chakra view. You can get in, you can't get out. And it's been a decade, over a decade for you in that market. Uh, so somehow that's the confusion. Are you in that chakra view? Are you able to get out of this? No, so I think uh, that's a, perhaps a bit unfair assessment of that because maybe distance doesn't give clarity uh, to people and they'll only look at financial outcomes. But the fact of the matter is, uh, as I said, if you look at the portfolio, when we acquired that business, we were 18 million tons. Today we are 10 million tons. So we have restructured all the uh, weak and challenging part of that business. Uh, yes, it gets more exposed to the movement or vo volatilities of the steel cycle because you buy 100% of your raw materials and you are exposed on the steel cycle uh, from a supplier perspective or as a, as a buyer perspective. And uh, you are also exposed to the market vagaries in a market which will never grow uh, the 7% of slowness that you are talking about. So uh, therefore, it is a challenging market to be in. It is a higher value added market. It is a, also a, a business which has a higher technology platform because the customers want that. But uh, it is therefore not an issue of entry or exit. It's a question of how focused we can run that business and I think uh, if you look at it from 15-16 when it was <coughs> on the worst years in the global steel cycle uh, to 16-17 where we uh, sold off our long products business, we sold off our specialty business, we, we took uh, uh, decisions on some closures uh, and restructured the business. Thereafter 16-17 was one of the best years in recent times. 17, 18 continued to be so. 18, 19, when the steel cycle started slowing down, we had some impact in the last two quarters, which is currently there. But uh, that's why we are renewed focus is on the operational improvements and operational improvements which are structural rather than being cyclical and uh, also focusing on getting the value of the investments that we have done, especially in Netherlands. I think we can make, and our goal is not, I'm not saying that we are going to look at a high ROE business. I'm saying it has to be cash sustainable business, which is, I think, doable. Why would you want to have that in your kitty in, in the first place? In that case, you said, uh, you know, by the first half of this financial year, we probably will have more clarity as to what you want to do with the European business, which so far has been a drag. Operationally, nine out of 12 years, we've seen a negative performance, operational loss coming in from the European business. Now, at this point of time, would you want to sell off your business completely if you, if you have a, a taker? Or would you still want to pursue a, a joint venture of sorts uh, and also, if you're in talks with any kind of joint venture with any of the player around in that. It's, it's, it's not so linear and easy <laughs> to kind of get into uh, in, a, in a market uh, which is already 
uh, has issues in terms of its uh, future demand and so on. So I think the question is not, as I said, it's not about entry or exit. It's a question of how you shape the business. The reason why we went into the JV proposal with Thyssen Group was that this combination provided a strong industrial logic which was sustainable for the business and it was sustainable for us as shareholders. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that is actually one of the unique combinations uh, that would have happened if the regulators had looked at it from the same lens. But uh, that being in the past, and that's no, no longer relevant, uh, it is a question of therefore uh, looking at making the business sustainable and valuable. I don't think nine out of 10 years you had any issues in Netherlands. We had issues in the UK and we have gone through the restructuring as far as UK is concerned. If we look at opportunities in the future, I think the first step is to ensure that as we see markets soft, this is not the time to have these kind of conversation. This is a time to ensure that you make it more sustainable. Then if there are other opportunities at any point in time in the future, who okay. knows?